Hello and welcome to this video on scanning large pictures. I'll be taking you through some of the steps that I use when it comes to scanning a large piece. Uh, and in this example, I'll be scanning an A2 with an A4 scanner. Now, if you've ever got a large picture like this, it's very difficult to know how to approach the work. Which way should you scan it? How many scans it going to take? That sort of thing. So we have two options when it comes to the scanning. We can scan across the sheet like this example shown here or we can turn it round and scan down the sheet so I'll be going through doing a, a plan in Photoshop to so which is the best way of going about it so if you want to do a, a dummy run in Photoshop we have two options firstly we can create just a blank document to setting it to the dimensions of the sheet don't need to worry about the resolution at this stage The second option we have is to photograph the original. We can use a mobile phone or our digital camera for this. But we do need to make sure that we get rid of the background and we make sure that the image is straight. To do this, we just simply click on, click on the crop tool. And up here we have straighten. So I'm going to left click on one corner, keep my finger on the left mouse button the next corner then all I have to do then is just crop it down once we're happy with that we just check the image size and uh, we want to set this again to the same size as the original in this case I'm setting it to an A2 size as you can see I'm slightly out for the, from the cropping So the best way to solve this problem is, is unclick this link here and just resize it that way. It will stretch the picture a bit but it will give us a better idea of what's going on. At the top here you'll see I have this ruler mark. If you don't see this just click on view and then you'll see rulers here. So just make sure that activated and then you can choose your centimeters or inches depending on what you prefer because what we're going to do now is just set up the flatbed size so in this case I'm going to be working on the assumption that it's going to be A4 so I left click on the side here drag this along to 29.7 and then this one down to 21 from here I'll create a new layer Go to the rectangular marquee tool, left click again and then drag it to the guides. Go to edit, fill, and I'm going to fill this with 50% grey and I'm going to set the opacity to 45%. Then to get rid of these marching ants it's just control or command D and then to get rid of these grid lines just go on to view clear guides so that's where our first scan is going to be if we right click on layer 1 and click duplicate layer okay and then using the move tool we can then move this along now it should look like that two scans would be perfect for this but we do need to have an overlap as you can see in this darker area ideally the more of an overlay you've got the better uh, it helps with lining up the sections later on so for in this case because we can't quite fit two in we're going to have to do three and then the same going down And we have the same problem here in that it fits nicely there but we need to have a nice overlay so you can see by scanning across the page it's going to take us three across and three down which is nine in total so let's try it the other way around 
So rather than having to, to redo the template again, just make sure this layer is selected and press Ctrl or Command T. And you'll see at the top here we have this, what looks like an eye, it's the angle. So we just want to change that to 90. And then accept it. And then move that down. Again we duplicate the layer. And then we can just line up our sections here, making sure we've got a decent amount of, of overlay. And straight away you can see it's going to take six sections when we do this. Now regardless of which way you want to scan your artwork, it's always important to keep it going in the same direction. Don't rotate the paper. So if you're scanning in this direction, you want the first scan to be going in this direction, and then you want the second scan to be going in this direction. So once that's all set up, we now have basically a map of where our scan sections need to be. So it's really useful then if we've got something to compare to when we're actually doing doing the scans. Once we've got our six scans done, the next thing we need to do is join these together. So when we come to joining these sections, we have two options. We can let Photoshop do it, which is the easiest, or we can do it manually. I'll start off by showing you the Photoshop way. So go on File, Automate, and Photo Merge. Here we've got different ways of positioning them. I'll just go for Reposition. And over here we have Browse. So here we go to, go to the sections that we created from our scan. And just select all of the sections and click OK. Just click, just, uh, just check in here that we've got all six. Once we're done, making sure that the blend images together is highlighted and click OK. And that's it. Photoshop will now stitch all of these pieces together for us. And then once the sections are aligned, it will then do a second stage where it actually blends all the layers together. And that's our combined scan. And you'll see here we have these what are called layer masks. The white bits just show you which part of the, the scan is being used. So it doesn't, as you can see from here, it doesn't use the straight edges it, it blends it in as well as it can and if we zoom in we can see how well it's, it's lined these up so it looks really good once that's done we just go to layer flatten image and then we can save it the second option we have is to do it manually so here I've created a, a sheet again, the same size as the original. And I'm making sure that the resolution that I'm using here is the same size that I'd set for the scan. In this case, 600 ppi. Once that's done, we can just open up our sections. And using the move tool, we'll just put in our first scan. And then we just slide in our second scan. Now there's two ways of, of lining these up. The first way is to make the second layer transparent. So at the top here we have opacity at 100%. 
we can slide this down to about 70% and then line it up visually. So about there. The second option, well the second way of doing it, which gives you a much more accurate result, we set this back up to 100. I'll just move this over so you can see what's going on. We click, make sure that layer 2 is highlighted and right click and right at the top here we'll have blending options. Click on that and here we have blend mode currently at normal and we'll change this sliding down here to difference. It's made that second layer look really odd but it will make sense in a minute. Now when we come to slide in If I just zoom in here and you can see, you can see we get in this darker area where the two combine. So what we want to do is where these, this darker patch is, we want it to go as black as possible. And then once we're like that, we know that we're nicely lined up. So just right click on this layer two again, select blending option, and this time just change it back to normal. And we we'll repeat that for all the sections. So on this last section, you'll notice I have a, a black area here that I need to keep an eye on, as well as the overlap on the left and on the right. So again, zooming in to make it a bit easier to see. And also it helps because any black lines now appear white, making it much easier to line up. And that's pretty much it now, as, as black as I'm going to get it. Just reset that to normal. And there you go, we've now combined that manually. So again, you can just go on layer, flatten an image, and then save. So that's the two ways you can stitch these uh, sections together.